Chuck, it's that time again. Yes, it is. Indeed. For our exp explainer video. And so for today, we have a topic that falls outside of my expertise. Okay. I, I enjoy thinking about this subject, but I don't I don't know I don't know enough about it to be being the explainer. So we're gonna talk about volcanoes. Ooh. And with the question, is Yellowstone gonna blow? That's the question. Okay, right. And so we need a we need a volcanologist for this, all right? And so we found one. Okay. Okay. In, in the in the name of Janine Krippner. Janine, welcome to Star Talk. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Excellent. And you work for the Smithsonian Global Volcanism Program, and mm -hmm. I'm glad people are thinking about volcanoes worldwide because they're all over the place. Okay. So Janine, what is uh, Yellowstone is in the news anytime someone wants to think apocalyptically. So, and we've all been told and we've all heard it's a super volcano. What is a super volcano? Super volcano is basically a name that was made up for a volcano that has at some point in the past produced the largest style of eruption. That does not mean it's going to do it again. It does not mean that every eruption is that big. In fact, most eruptions are much, much smaller. So it's kind of a term that basically is the monster under the bed of volcanoes of the current age. Okay, so when you say a big eruption, do you speak of volume of yes. ash that comes out? Or, and, or, or, so what's a, what's a typical volume for a super volcano to be called a super volcano? So for these super eruptions, or we have this volcano explosivity index, VEI. So it goes from one, or there is smaller as well, but for this one to eight. Eight is this super eruption. Wait, wait, why doesn't it go to 10? Yeah. What, what do you get eight? What's wrong with eight? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm a 10 chauvinist. I'm right. sorry. Okay. Uh, well, it's, it's I, looking I'm, I'm at volume. Say, I'm going to say, never in my life have I been asked on a scale of one to eight. How, <laughs> how do you feel? About, no one has ever done that. Ever. Okay. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Well, you're missing out. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. There we need go. Yeah, hang out with more volcanologists. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna use that now. Thank you. Let's go one to eight of Yellowstone being eight and and right. walk in the park being one. Where is 2020? <laughs> um, so a VEI eight or these super eruptions are um, you're looking at a volume of magma erupting that's around a thousand cubic kilometers. So it's cubic, a lot of rock coming out of the cubic ground. Cubic kilometers. So a thousand if you take the cube root you get how big a cube would be on the side. So 10 kilometers on a side. So for, for the American audience, you've heard of 10K runs, that's about six miles. So imagine a cube six miles across deep and high, Damn. and that's how much lava came out. That's crazy. That's, yeah. yeah. So that, luckily for that, us, that it's very, very like hard to get that amount of magma out of the ground. Yay. In fact, to accumulate that much magma in one place where it's an eruptible state is very, very difficult and takes a long time. So we all know, based on every tabloid headline out there in Yellowstone, that there is this big magma reservoir under the volcano. But less than 15% of it is actually liquid. A lot of it is crystals and solid rock, so it's kind of locked up in the system. You need at least 30%-ish for that to erupt. So there's not even enough liquid um, eruptable magma, as far as we know, under Yellowstone for it to produce a style of eruption. Well, wait, so d does Yellowstone, is there a crater rim to that? Because I visited it a couple of years ago and you're just there, you know, there's a hot spring here and a singed tree there. And I'm not thinking I'm in the middle of a, of a volcanic crater, but you're telling me it is a crater, it's just way bigger than I could see in that moment? So it's a caldera. So a crater is generally a hole in the ground formed during an eruption. So you have a lot of stuff coming out of the volcano. A caldera goes the other way. That's when you have so much magma erupting that the ground actually collapses in on itself. I didn't so, know that. Yeah, and we've, we've had a few recent ones. In fact, there was caldera collapse in 2018 at Kilauea. So yeah. they're not always explosive. Um, they're not always these big catastrophic events. They can be slow. Um, but with these VEI-8 eruptions, they are very catastrophic, very, very explosive. They can produce ash of 40 kilometers up into the air. Um, and it can cause a few years, at least, of global cooling as well. Um, Wait, so if you go 40 kilometers up, now you're in, like, the jet stream. And you can mm. easily wrap the Earth if you, if you get that high up. You still yeah. have a local weather. It's, like, global. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of the heavier stuff, because this is solid rock that's coming out. This isn't mm -hmm. like your ash that you get out of a fireplace. It's solid rock. So a lot of the heavier stuff is going to fall out within kilometers of the volcano. Um, but you can still get very fine glass. And we saw this with the Eifert the 2010 eruption, which the ash came out of Iceland and moved its way over Europe and closed the air spaces because it's not safe to fly through this stuff. So it would be devastating. <laughs> Yeah, I do think, actually. That is my professional opinion. <laughs> don't <laughs> fly through the volcanic plume. Don't right. fly through an eruption. <laughs> um, we've also been doing a lot more research on how much, like, how much do you need in the atmosphere for it to be dangerous since that eruption. So there's a lot more uh, understanding of what you can fly through um, or how high or low you have to be to avoid it. Um, and, and, and how exactly are you getting the, uh, the empirical results? Who's... Who's testing this flying by flying through it? There was actually someone there who flew through volcanic ash to test it out. Wow. God. So but they you can get a jet engine and put it in a lab as well. That's probably a Yeah, that, that would be the way. Chuck Nice way instead of the Super <laughs> Dave Osborne way of actually flying through <laughs> volcanic <laughs> eruptions. That's crazy. All right. So, so uh, not to put words in your mouth, but you're saying we are overreacting in our storytelling about the risks of Yellowstone. If it happened, which at this point there is no evidence that it's going to anytime soon, and by anytime soon I'm saying hundreds of years at least, um, it would be horrible in every sense of that word, but it is very unlikely to happen. In fact, the, over the last 50 eruptions of Yellowstone, most of them have been much smaller, have been lava flows. So yes, almost everything you read in the news about Yellowstone is an exaggeration. Hmm. So Cl clickbait. Yeah, yeah yes. clickbait, clickbait. So I think what you said was particularly damning of those, of those suggestions when you said, uh, it's one thing to have a place where it could happen, but you have to gather the magma. It's got to all be liquid, and it's it's got to be able to punch through. And if you don't, it's a checklist basically, yes. right? If, yeah. if you don't satisfy this checklist, go home. You know, go study another volcano. Yep. Yeah. So I don't study it. I'm studying volcanoes that are more likely to erupt at this stage. Oh, oh <laughs> wow. she just yeah, burn. Oh, Yellowstone wow. burn. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, but if you look was, at right, I don't I don't have time for the do nothing. Um, I don't have time for that. I'm sorry. Okay, I have to spend my Chuck, time. She did not do this yeah. with her head while she said that. I, I need, I need time to see what's happening. Stuff that's actually happening. Yeah, a little, little more active, like less than more than much more recent than seventy thousand years ago. Thank you. I let the I let the old volcanologist deal with Yellowstone. <laughs> I need some action. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, there are great volcanologists studying this volcano and doing incredible work. It's just not my area. We can't study everything in one All lifetime. Right. So if I can broaden this just a little bit, um, there were other super volcanoes in the history of the fossil record. Mm -hmm. um, one of them I learned about from my, from my uh, dinosaur colleagues, the Deccan Traps mm -hmm. in India. I think they were known to have uh, exploded 65 million years ago about when we lost the big dinosaurs. So here we have a case where holding aside the asteroid that I, I got an asteroid I gave you 65 million years ago. Was that not enough to kill your dinosaurs? But they're invoking a super volcano. So as darkening the earth and possibly affecting the food chain. So you would agree that a modern supervolcano would have would be as devastating. Is that correct? No, that's not a supervolcano. That's actually something entirely different. So those very large um, flood basalt volcanoes, they 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 occur over millions of years. First of all, they produce a lot of very runny lava, um, and they've generally got smaller over time. And we don't know that another one will. Is that an official it. term, runny lava? It is today. Okay. okay right. Low viscosity. Low viscosity lava. Low viscosity. Thank runny, you. Low runny viscosity. lava. Right. Very runny. Um, <laughs> and they go over enormous distances. Um, there have been multiple of them. So the Columbia River basalts over in Washington and Oregon is a more local example for America. 
Um, and so those, it's repaving a whole area of Earth's surface. Yes, and tens to hundreds of meters of stacked lava flows over millions of years. So it's not just one event, whereas a super okay. eruption is one event, much more explosive, much stickier or more viscous lavas as well. So different lava type altogether, much shorter event, still devastating. But those big flood basalts, those are m much worse. Okay, so people thinking that the Yellowstone is ready to go at any time, makes great story fodder. And Janine, a volcanologist, says no. No, and go to the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. It's not just the United States Geological Survey. I know there are trust issues with government everywhere in the world. Um, it's a group of different organizations that are monitoring this volcano. Plus, if this volcano was going to produce something big, you could not hide the signs even if you wanted to. And as volcanologists, we never do. We want to help people, that's what we do. We're trying to warn people and keep people safe. But if for some non-existent reason, people wanted to hide this, you couldn't. There would be a lot of warning um, for, to get that magma moving towards the surface. This is really sticky, solid like magma. There are gonna be a lot of signs. There's gonna be a lot of gas emissions, a lot of earthquake, it's gonna break a lot of um, ground going through. Not to say that earthquakes mean a volcanic eruption is gonna happen. That's also a tectonically, tectonically active area. Um, and there'd also be deformation. There is normal deformation in that area too, but there'd be much more significant. You'd see act, um, increasing activity around the park over a large area. You couldn't hide that. So Janine, the, the, the corresponding example of that in my field is if you looked at the film um, Armageddon, mm -hmm. and so apparently the government found an asteroid the size of Texas headed towards Earth and kept it a secret from people. You can't keep the sky a secret. <laughs> People, we have telescopes. We can look up, okay? We, yeah. I, I can find that. And it is not something the government can keep as a secret. Yeah, and, and why would you, you want to? And, and, and you, <laughs> you need to. So, But the, the story needs it because you don't want to be able to trust the government. But yeah. Anyhow, Janine, we gotta we gotta sort of bring this shit you knew to a thought you knew to a close. Uh, give us some something. Someone is thinking about being a scientist, tell us why they should be a, a volcanologist. If you love volcanoes, that's the thing to do. It's a very difficult career, like any career that needs a PhD and experience, but it is, it's an incredible field. I absolutely love what I do. It's, you know, whatever you want to do, whether it's volcanoes, whether it's space, whether it's art, whether it's singing, whether it's comedy, you know, if that's what really makes your heart sing, go for it. I'm, if I'm it's gonna, hard, it's going to be hard anyway. You may I'm as well gonna, be I'm, doing something you like. I'm going to disagree with the comedy. Don't do that, please. <laughs> do not, oh, do I'll not, let the expert talk about that. Don't ruin your life. Don't ruin your life. <laughs> don't ruin your life. You don't want to do it. Let me, let me ask you this. If you could have a saying for, if volcanologists had, like the army, they used to have those commercials, we do more before 6 a.m., than most people do all day, which is why I didn't join the army because that just sounds like really hard. <laughs> like they they should have gone with you know, we sleep until twelve and then we have pancakes. I'm like, oh, sign me up, <laughs> sign me up. Um, I bet you're so, Janine, exactly What's your tagline? So what would the tagline for a volcanologist be? Uh, maybe Earth, we're watching you. Oh, Ooh. oh, look at you. All right. Ooh. Yo, that's hot. Okay. Right on. I like that. I like it. Very nice. Very nice. Well, Janine. Did you say hot because magma? Like, of course uh -huh. I did. But, you know, yeah. I didn't want you to point it out. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. There you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, there are volcanoes on some of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, except they're ice volcanoes. Sweet. So, so having a volcano is not a matter of being hot. It's a matter of how much pressure is there. You can have pressure at any temperature. Spoken like on. a true Neil deGrasse Tyson. I love it. I just it. thought <laughs> I'd put that in. All right. We got to end it there. Janine, great to have you. Thanks for sharing your expertise. Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, signing off. Bidding you to keep working up. <laughs>